George R.R. Martin versus J.R.R. Tolkien. Hello, folks. What's up? We're back at it again with another comparison. And in this video, we have a pretty solid one because this comparison is between two of the biggest names in the fantasy genre, both in terms of movies and TV and on the bookshelves, of course. This is the battle of the big R's. That is, firstly, the father of epic fantasy, none other than J.R.R. Tolkien, of course, and his contemporary counterpart, George R.R. Martin. Now, before we say anything more, let me remind you that we have immense respect for both these authors, as they're both masters of their field. Also, before we get into the actual writing and lore of the Martin and Tolkien words, let's talk about a tale less told, the writer's own stories. Which brings us to the first topic of our comparison, that is, childhood and upbringing. So, first, let's go into the details of the mastermind behind the award-winning TV show, Game of Thrones. George Raymond Richard Martin was born on September 20, 1948, and the American novelist is based in Bayonne, New Jersey. His father, Raymond Collins Martin, underwent long periods of unemployment before landing stable work as a longshoreman. So, while living with both of his parents and his two sisters, Martin's family never had much money, never had a car, and he'd spend much of his early childhood constricted around his block between his grade school and his home. This is basically his entire world. It was only natural that he longed to get out of this tiny world and would find imaginatively creative ways of doing so. This environment was the catalyst that would cultivate the writer's mind, and boy, are we grateful for that. He would often fantasize the world around him. The city lights that he would see from a distance were like Shangri-La, and he would invent stories to explain those foreign places he'd never seen but had only seen afar. That was basically the story of Martin's humble beginnings. But what about the prolific writer of ages past? Let's get back in time to the end of the 19th century. January 3rd, 1892. Blumfontein, present-day Southern Africa. A couple, Arthur Rule Tolkien and his wife Mabel, had a baby boy and named him John Ronald Rule Tolkien. Tolkien was born to a family of East Prussian descent and was originally from then Prussian town of Kruisberg, now Slavskoy in Western Russia. After losing both of his parents in his younger days, Tolkien and his brother were left in the complete care of a Friar Morgan. Tolkien grew up in the Edgebaston area of Birmingham and attended King Edward's school there, and later St. Philip's school. His family was devoutly Catholic and so was he. Religion played an important part throughout his life and would influence his book's ideology. Tolkien had a flair for linguistic things and developed a passion for languages early on. In 1909, Tolkien learned Esperanto, which is an auxiliary language. Around the 10th of June 1909, he composed The Book of the Fox Rook, a 16-page notebook where the earliest examples of one of his invented alphabets appears. Tolkien expressed a liking towards German, Welsh, Latin, and especially Greek, but he never really took to French as an influence. Number two, but why did they start writing? Influences. Well, let's start again with Martin. Martin undoubtedly gets his taste for epic fantasy from Tolkien and says so himself. But interestingly, Tolkien wasn't his greatest influence. Back when he was a kid, the dominant comic books were DC comics before Marvel came along. In his opinion, DC didn't have that complexity in its characters that Marvel did. But what sparked the fire and love of writing that would eventually turn into the blazing beacon fire of a prolific writer whom we all know today? What began our beloved bearded maester's journey? As a kid, Martin began writing monster stories for the other kids in his neighborhood. As a sophomore in high school, Martin was a nerdy kid. He once wrote about Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Pit and the Pendulum, with a twist at the end, of course. Martin, true to his wonderful sense of tragedy, even at that young age, impressed his teacher, and he liked it so much that he made Martin read it in front of all of his classmates. So who could foresee that this child protege of gritty writing would one day create gripping fictional characters you become emotionally invested in, right? Only to then rip them away from your life by killing them off horribly. Rest in peace, Oberyn Martell. Now, what about Tolkien? Well. Tolkien's crucial years were the years that he built strong friendships. During his years at King Edward School, Tolkien would make three close friends, Rob Gilson, Geoffrey Bake Smith, 
and Christopher Wiseman. Together, they would form a four-member secret society, the TCBS. They would discuss all poetry, literature, and languages, which definitely influenced Tolkien. In 1914, Tolkien entered the Great War. After this cruel twist of fortune in war, Tolkien would finally regain himself in 1920, the year he was decommissioned. He was later employed at the Oxford English Dictionary, where he worked to his expertise in the history and etymology of Germanic originating words. Tolkien had a deep interest in European mythology, Germanic legends, Old English, literature and poetry like Beowulf, Norse sagas and the poetic Edda were what he described as stimulants to his imagination. Sophocles' Oedipus Rex also influenced elements, the Silmarian and the children of Hurin. So those were about their influences and origins. Now moving on to the next topic of comparison, we have at number three, books and awards. Starting with Martin again, he has quite an arsenal of books that he's written, so we'll try to give you a list of the best ones. At 1923, he first wrote, With Morning Comes Mistfall, which was nominated for the 1973 Hugo Award for the Best Short Story. Martin was also hired as a writer-producer of the new dramatic fantasy series Beauty and the Beast, and in 1989, he became the show's co-supervising producer and wrote 14 of its episodes. Although it wasn't until the 90s that Martin would make the series he's best known for. In 91, Martin began writing his debut epic fantasy novels, novels that are a part of the A Song of Ice and Fire series. The series is planned to have seven books, of which five have been published already. The first book of the series, A Game of Thrones, inspired the name for the HBO television series Game of Thrones and was published in 1996. It was followed by Clash of Kings in 98 and A Storm of Swords in the year 2000. In 2005, it was A Feast for Crows, which made it to the New York Times number one bestseller. This built up the hype for the fifth book, published in 2011, that became an international bestseller and also landed number one in the New York Times bestsellers list yet again. It grabbed the final place in the 2012 Hugo Awards as well. A matter of much debate among fans and critics is when on earth Martin is going to publish the sixth title to his series, The Winds of Winter. But much to the frustration of his fans, the book was never published at the scheduled year of 2018. As for Tolkien, let's first look into his scholarly publications. Tolkien produced a definitive edition of the 14th century medieval romance Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. After this, he returned to Oxford as Rawlinson and Bosworth Professor of Anglo-Saxon with a fellowship at Pembroke College. It was during this time that he would write his classic The Hobbit, a prequel to the Lord of the Rings series. Tolkien also published a highly acclaimed critical work, Beowulf, The Monsters and the Critics, which is widely regarded as the turning point in Beowulfian criticism. Moving on to his novels, The Hobbit. Hobbits adore tobacco and fireworks, so does Professor Tolkien. Published in 1937, this children's story is incredibly humanistic and reveals that sometimes the strongest of hearts is found in the most unlikely of places. The Lord of the Rings is a three-part epic fantasy novel series, Tolkien's life work, and oh boy, what a gift to humanity. Set in the fantasy world of Middle-earth, the story is the classical fight against a great evil at its best. Thus begins a tale of epic proportions, and that would today become the most widely loved fantasy books of all time. In 1957, The Lord of the Rings won the International Fantasy Award for Fiction. The Silmarillion, an even more somber story of a much earlier Middle Earth called The Silmarillion, in which there are no hobbits. The Silmarillion was published posthumously in 1977 and won the Locus Award, or the Best Fantasy Novel, in 1978. A 12-book series that Tolkien wrote on the history of his fictional world was published by Tolkien's son, Christopher Tolkien, posthumously. Moving ahead, now we have number four, television adaptations. First, we have Martin. Here we have Game of Thrones, with 73 episodes broadcast over eight seasons. The pilot reportedly cost HBO five to $10 million to produce, while the first season's budget was estimated at 50 to 60 million. In the second season, Blackwater had an $8 million budget, 
between 2012 and 2015 the average budget per episode increased from six million to at least eight million dollars by the final season the production budget per episode was estimated to be 15 million dollars Game of Thrones has won numerous awards including 59 Emmy Awards eight Screen Actors Guild Awards and a Peabody Award it holds the Emmy Award for most wins for a scripted television series Rolling Stone named it the 12th greatest TV show of all time that year moving on to Tolkien from 2001 to 2003 New Line Cinema released The Lord of the Rings as a trilogy of live-action films that was directed by Peter Jackson the series is one of the highest rated in IMDb cost around 240 million dollars to make and won numerous Oscars it also won the Hugo Awards for the best dramatic presentation in 2002 2003 and 2004 from 2012 to 2014 Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema released The Hobbit a series of three films based on The Hobbit with Peter Jackson serving as executive producer director and co-writer so let's move on to the conclusion now when reading fantasy for the first time the number one suggestion is to tackle Tolkien first and then appreciate the innovations that newer writers have built upon what Tolkien created we'd advise the same the refreezing storytelling of Lord of the Rings coupled with the super literary style of writing leaves us with only one piece of advice treat yourself as you move on to Martin the writing gets faster paced storytelling gritty and dark plot lines complex characters and fraction struggles it's basically like having Tolkien on steroids so there you have it which writers books is a better read according to you be sure to leave it down in the comment section we hope you enjoyed the video now if you want to keep watching more videos like these then don't forget to hit like subscribe and smash the bell icon too while you're at it thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one